brings us to the lovely diva herself, Miss Terry Farrell. You're not here with me, but I just sound good. You sound good, but you know that I'm not. No, no, we I don't think other. you would like me so much if I was. No. Well, first of all, what was last year like when we got her dressed up in the wedding outfit? Oh, God. That was so much fun. What a moment. What a moment. Um, you come from a big family. Yes. Well, it, it's funny because it felt small to me until all my sisters started having kids. Um, at first it was just me and my sister Chris, and then my mom thankfully married this wonderful man, uh, Dave Rusendorf, who became my dad when I was 11 or 12. I asked him to adopt me, but not till I was 19. And he had three daughters. So now um, there are 11 grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. I only offered one to the bunch, so Max is only 11. That's a nice family. Yes, it is. And he loves going to Iowa. He says it's his favorite side of the family because he's got four aunts and uncles and tons of cousins to play with. And yeah, it's the big house I can't serve. You know, it, starting having him at 40, I didn't really have the opportunity to give him brothers and sisters. Well, you come out of a family like that and you kind of plunge yourself into a modeling career. Now, that's. It may seem very glamorous to people, but I think modeling is actually a, can be a pretty tough career. Yeah. You started um, at what age with that? Or? I was 17. Um, I sent out my pictures to modeling agents. At the time, I plucked my eyebrows a lot. It, it, <laughs> it was a thing to do in the, in the late 70s, was to basically, I don't know, strip yourself of all facial hair. And... Um, <laughs> They wrote back and said, maybe you should let your eyebrows grow back in. <laughs> and uh, I went to New York in June that same year. I graduated my junior year. I, I, I had one semester left that I needed to get. So my mom was like, you know, if, you, if it works in New York, you'll stay there and um, pretty much just stay there, I would imagine. Or if you come home, you can take your GED and then you can go to the community college. And I'm thinking, I don't even know what I would be good enough at to go to college. I never thought I was smart enough, I guess, to go, unfortunately. And, um... Well, how long did you model before you transitioned to acting? Well, actually, I started taking commercial class and Shakespeare sonnet classes that first summer because uh, J. Michael Bloom was an agency that was successful at that time. And has so... No, it's dissolved, but it was very successful at that time. And like they had all Alec Baldwin when he first started, so everybody's like, woo! And uh, but they did tons of commercials, and so the commercial agent came up to me and said, "Would you like to be an actress?" And I said, "Well, what do I have to do?" And she goes, "Well, I you have to go to an acting class." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Since I don't know what to study in college, and this is like looking like this could be my future, I was so happy not to be. I just felt like I was going to be stuck in a minimum wage, dead end kind of, oh my gosh, what am I going to do with my life? And then this came about and Kmart no longer was my, my big choice. It was like, I can make my life different here. So no matter how scary this is, I'm jumping in. And uh, that's exactly what I did. I just started taking acting classes and working as much as I could. Uh, how did uh, the DS9 gig come about? Um, I had... By then, um, wow, 20 years later, no, <laughs> 10 years later, I read for it. Um, I got at the end of the, of the rung of reading for it. At the beginning of the summer, um, Junie Lowry wouldn't see me. She'd already seen me for things, and she just didn't think I was right for the part of uh, Judzia Dax. And for my, fortunately for me, they looked all summer and they didn't find anyone, so in August, when she didn't have anybody else to look at, I guess that's when they oh, Christ, now we got to meet Terry Farrell. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I came in, and I was a nervous wreck. It's so funny, I feel kind of like that old feeling, just talking about it, it comes back to you. So thrilling. Um, 
especially such a great feeling when someone doesn't want to see you. I think I maybe relished about that too much when I first got such a part. Miserable, it's such a miserable process that actors have to go through. It's very uh, uh, personality stripping, I mean, you know. It's very stressful, and you have to have, um, well, you, I think being grounded is, is important. It's hard to stay grounded, but there's a part of your ego that has to be healthy enough to say, okay, they didn't want me, I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna pull my scarves up and we're gonna go in there and we're gonna try again. And there's something about that, uh, I'm not gonna give up old fashioned, uh, I have that I thank my parents for, you know, you're, you're fine, brush it off, get up, do it again. And if it weren't for that, I would have given up way sooner, you know, so. Thankfully you didn't. Thankfully I did not. And actually I read for it and then this one woman, she didn't show up, so they were having another casting the week after, and they said I didn't have to go, because SAG, in SAG rules, you can't make someone have their final audition twice. I'd already done it. But I requested to come in because I didn't want her to win it, because I wasn't there. So I went and I did it twice for the